Okay, so we have to talk about normal distribution. And that's way easier to do just on a whiteboard. So that's what I'm going to try to do, okay? Imagine this situation. I'm gonna give you a very physical example first and then we can get to psychological stuff. It turns out that a lot of things in life are normally distributed, but what does that really mean? Well, physical example. Imagine I don't trust the dairy industry. I think they're ripping me off. So I do an experiment. I go to a supermarket and I buy 1,000 milk cartons that all are a liter each. So one liter is a thousand milliliters, okay? Um, and I have very specific measuring equipment that allows me to uh, determine down to the last milliliter how much milk is in each carton. Okay, I can do that. And now I'm going to write down all those observations. So I can say something like, okay, um, I have 1,000 milliliters. That's what a one liter carton should hold. Okay, and now I have, I have one of these. And now I measure the next carton. I'm not gonna do a thousand, don't worry. I do the next one. That is actually a thousand and one milliliters. Well, I like that because it's a little more than I purchased. I have one of these. And now I have 999 milliliters and I have one. And I take the next one, it's a thousand. And I take one that's a thousand and two. And that's one. And then I have another thousand and I have a 999. And I also have a 998. I have one of these and I have another 1001. I have another 1000. I have another 1002. This goes all the way down. So somewhere here, I mean, of course, a carton is limited by how much milk it can hold. It can't be an infinite amount. But let's let's say that the, the top I get out of this is something like, uh, I don't know, 1010 or something. Okay, so that happens once in between here, a couple other observations, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, all the way down to 1,010. And all the way here, I have, let's say, 990, right? Dot, dot, dot. I have a couple of those as well. Now, if you look at these frequencies, what's going to happen is I'm going to get something like this. And if I, if I make a bit of a curve out of that, which is not that easy, uh, for, like drawing this way, I would get something, oh, that's really bad. See, as I said, it's not that easy. I would get something like that, okay? Now all I'm going to do is flip this that way. Now what I've drawn is something like this. And that's a normal distribution, but what does that mean? Well, down the center here is the mean. The mean is going to probably be something like a thousand milliliters. What? Right? One thousand milliliters. Now I can also compute what we talked about in class, the standard deviation. And the standard deviation, if you really want to know, I won't test you on that. But let's say I have three observations, okay? Three observations, one, two, three, and their values are one, two, three. Okay, well, I know that this has a mean because the values I have are one, two, three. I know that two is the mean, plus one plus two is three, plus three is six, divided by three observations is two. We can all do this, this is very basic math. So I know that my mean, we call that x bar, is two. How do I compute the standard deviation? I'm just showing you, you're not asked to reproduce this, uh, you, you won't be asked to do that. That's going to be the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by big N square rooted. Okay, that's not as difficult as it seems. All I do is I take each value, one and two and three. Okay, I'm just showing you this because sometimes people ask me, I would better understand this with a formula. Well, that's the formula. So what I do in this formula, quite simply, is this. I say the standard deviation is the, each value minus the mean squared, one minus the mean, which was two squared, plus two minus the mean squared, plus three minus the mean, oh, minus the mean squared, 
divided by big M, square rooted. Okay, now I'm not, I don't want to take you through all the steps. One minus two is minus one squared is one. Two minus two is zero, squared remains zero. Three minus two is one, squared remains one. So I basically get one plus zero plus one, divided by a total number of observations is three. So basically that comes down to two thirds, two, one plus zero plus one, divided by three, square rooted. If you have completely lost me, that's perfectly fine. This is intro psych, okay? I don't expect you to reproduce any of this. But for those of you who like formulas, that's what I've really done. So I get something like, I think something like this. That's now my standard deviation. Okay, now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna to stick to our main contents. Well, I'm gonna to to, to keep things really simple. So what I'm gonna tell you is, I have computed what I've just done, but now for my mill cartons. And I've concluded that my mean, x bar, is a thousand, and that my standard deviation, mathematical symbol s, but for simplicity I'm gonna call that sd here, okay? It's five, I'm making this up, okay? Five, just so we have a round number. Now, why is, this, why is this normal distribution so interesting? Because it turns out, and this is the figure you will see in the PowerPoint and that you will see in the textbook. I, again, I'm drawing this by hand, so it's not gonna be perfect. But it turns out that 68%, plus a little decimal, but for sake of convenience, 34% and 34% together making 68%, right? Add the two up. Of all my observations of all these milk cartons are going to fall between these values, the mean minus one standard deviation. So this is minus one standard deviation and plus one standard deviation, 68%, okay? Now the next one is gonna be here. So remember, these bars basically just indicate this, right? How many of each count did I have? How many 1,000s? How many 1,001s? How many 1,002s? It's pretty easy. Now I go up another standard deviation, plus one standard deviation. So now I am two standard deviations above the mean. One, two, plus two standard deviations. I've said my standard deviation is five, that's how that's indicated, five. Okay, I have a thousand, plus five, plus five. The mean, plus one standard deviation, plus one standard deviation, 1,010. Can you figure where this is going? Now I do plus three standard deviations. Thousand, oh, that's really ugly, I'm sorry. 1,000 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. 1, 2, 3 standard deviations. Plus 3 standard deviations. Well, that's going to be 1,015, isn't it? 1,000 and 15. That was another plus 1 standard deviation. And the same way I can go down. The mean minus 1 minus another 1 standard deviation. Standard deviation being 5, mean being 1,000. 1,000 minus 5 minus 5 is 990. Minus another 5 is 985. Right? Minus another standard deviation is 980, 975, etc. Turns out that all data I've just acquired, of all data, 68% is going to have values between minus 1 and plus standard deviation. 1, sorry, values between minus one standard deviation below the mean to plus one standard deviation above the mean. All that means is 68% of all my observations in milk cartons are going to have contents between 995 and 1005 milliliters. That's all. The next step, this date, you can see that this curve goes down. The next step is about 13 point, a couple of decimals, but let's just call that 14% rounded. And because this is a symmetrical curve, another 14% is here, okay? So now I have 68% plus 14 plus 14, okay? I'm going to erase a little bit here. Now 
That means that 96% of all my observations is going to have values between minus 2 standard deviations below the mean to plus 2 standard deviations above the mean. In other words, 990 milliliters to 1010 milliliters. Okay? So you see that almost all data, because 96% only leaves 4%, right? So here's going to be about 2% and about 2% and here's going to be something like 0. Point a little bit, 0. 0.1 a little bit. I've rounded so these numbers are all going to add up. Okay, look in your textbook that has all the exact values. So that means that um, almost all data falls between this value and that value. Now, you may say, okay, why the hell do I have to learn this in intro psych? Because I don't, like, psych is not about milk cartons. That is correct. But it turns out that many other values are also normally distributed. And I'm going to give you a psychological one. IQ. Turns out that IQ is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. It has to be that way. That's, you learn 261 why that's the case. That means that my mean is 100 and that minus 15, right? Minus one standard deviation. Okay? It's going to be 85. And plus one standard deviation is 115. Plus one standard deviation. In other words, 68% of all the people, all the IQs in the world, are going to be between 85 and 115. And uh, that also means that 14% of people Fourteen percent of people are going to have an IQ between 115 and 130. It's pretty easy, right? And minus another 15, minus another 15, minus another 15, minus another 15. And as this tail gets thinner, there's fewer and fewer observations, which is reflected by the percentages. 34, about 14, down, 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 down until there's almost no one there. Very few people are going to have an IQ of 200, right? That's almost that's almost no one because it's super high. Think about it. 100 plus 15, plus 15, plus etc. This is it. This is the normal distribution. Why are you bothered with this? Because a lot of psychology is based on this, especially with IQ, these kinds of things. All kinds of things in the world are. And if you want to learn all the details, if you want to stick around in psych, you're going to take 314 with me, and we're going to way more detail about this. But if you understand this, minus the formula, you don't have to know the formula for the standard deviation, you won't be tested on it, I just showed you that because maybe that makes it more, makes more sense to you mathematically what that means. That's all. If you get that, you're doing well. If there are any questions, let me know. I'll try to explain them as best as I can. Okay?